cryptosporidiosis case study. NH10 presented with a three-day history of severe diarrhea, high fever, severe stomach pains, dehydration, and nausea to the ER. Prior to this, two days ago, him and his family had just returned back from their family vacation from a water park in Florida. Because of his symptoms, the attending physician admitted him into the hospital and ordered labs such as blood work and a stool culture. He also told the nurse to put him on continuous fluids via IV and give him medicine to lower his fever. The labs that were taken, blood work in which the test is the blood is drawn and then it tested for antigens and antibodies that are specific to certain parasites. The stool culture test is when a technician looks at the feces through a microscope and visually inspects and records what parasites and parasite eggs, aka called ova, they observe. The next day his test results came back and the blood work was fine, but the stool culture came back positive for cryptosporidosis. What is cryptosporidiosis? Cryptosporidiosis is an illness caused by a parasite. The parasite lives in soil, food, and water. It may also be on surfaces that have been contaminated with feces, aka poop. You can become infected by swallowing a parasite if it's in your food, drinking water, or water you swim in. Ian was then prescribed nidazolinide and was discharged once his fever returned to the normal range. The medical family history. Ian is a fully vaccinated 10-year-old boy. The only medical history he has is the norovirus at the age of 4. His mother was diagnosed with irritable bowel syndrome 6 years ago. The question asks, what microorganism caused this disease and was the diagnosis correct and why? The microorganism that caused this disease was cryptosporidium, which is a microscopic parasite that causes the diarrheal disease cryptosporidosis. And yes, the diagnosis was correct because the stool samples were examined microscopically using different techniques such as acid, fast staining, and direct fluorescent antibody. And according to the CDC is preferred method of detection of cryptosporidosis. The question asks to describe two violence factors of this microorganism. To date, cryptosporidium specific violence factors have not been characterized to the point of unequivocally establishing their roles in causing damage to the host or proving that their deletion or inactivation results in a decrease of disease severity. Violence factors for cryptosporidium have been identified as genes involved in the initial interaction process of cryptosporidium ocytes and sporozytes with the host epithelial cells including exostation, glide motility, attachment invasion, parosiphorosis, vertical formation, intracellular maintenance, and a host of cell damage. The question asks to explain how N may have been infected by this microorganism. N may have been infected by this microorganism when he was at the water park swimming in contaminated water. The question asks, was the right treatment given? And if not, what else could have been given? Yes, the right treatment of nidazolinide was given. It's a common medication given for cryptosporidosis. The next question asks, what is the expected recovery time and is there a lifelong effect? Two weeks is the recovering time and it's a possibility that he could develop IVS as a lifetime effect. The last question asks, is his diagnosis linked to his mom's IBS diagnosis? The answer to that would be no. IBS is not hereditary, but he could develop the same diagnosis from having cryptosporidosis in the future.